Lovecraft, uh, I guess uh, you guys don't know me, but I'd like to give you a little background on how I met this gentleman. I was training Chupamaros down in uh, Uruguay in the Rebellion, and uh, he was posing as a roving troubadour puppeteer, and he actually saved my life, and I realized later, much later, that he was actually CIA. And uh, he asked me to come here tonight for a special presentation. I don't normally do this, but I owe him. So. We have free candy here, so... Don't feel like we're being skimpy here. I always travel Okay, go. I am the Ancient Mariner, and uh, this piece is called A Night at the Maritime. My friend uh, Professor Atwood will be playing the part of the bartender. <laughs> it's the early 1960s. I'm in the Navy assigned to a nuclear missile submarine operated, operating in Holy Loch, Scotland. When off duty, I'm usually, usually hanging at the bar at the Crown Hotel in Danoon. It's a resort town on the banks of the Holy Loch. Being the first American serviceman stationed in Scotland since World War II, we're treated like royalty by everybody, especially the young women. I'm in daily competition with my shipmates for both the attention of the young ladies and also for the unofficial title of town drunk for which I seem to possess an uncanny natural talent. It's Halloween night. I'm drinking at the Crown and getting depressed thinking of all the great parties I'm missing in New York City. I could have easily altered this uniform a bit and gone out as Popeye. I laughed out loud. What, is it, what did they call it here? All Hallows Eve. Mustn't be a big deal. I don't see anybody in costume out celebrating or anything. I decided to take the ferry over to the town of Gurick. It's a sleepy old town across the lock about an hour. It's dark when I arrived and there's a dense fog hanging over the small valley. I find the first bar on the waterfront down there. And looks like it's out of the Middle Ages. Thatched roof. The sign up front bears the remnants of an old sailing ship, and the words above appear to have once been the maritime, but most of the letters have faded, and all that remains clearly are the words time in Gothic script. The name is quite fitting, actually, because once inside the place, it looks like it hasn't been cleaned or redecorated since Victoria was queen. Reminds me of McSorley's over on 7th Street, but grungier if that's possible. I belly up to the bar and I order a pint of heavy and a shot of whiskey. Place isn't very crowded and they all look to be locals. I notice a woman at the far end of the bar staring at me. I light up my most charming smile, trying not to look too stu stupid. She eventually walks over and says, Hey Yank, I'm Rosie McGree. Got a cigarette? She looks to me in her late twenties, good looking, but she's been around the block a few times. She's very petite, and she has sharp, penetrating eyes. I offer her a Marlboro, and she stares at it curiously for a moment before taking it and breaking off the filter. She drops the filter on the sawdust floor and indicates she'd like a light. I flip out my zipper, and as I push the flame toward her cigarette, she bolts back like a scared pony, staring wide-eyed at the lighter. Jeez, this girl's weird, like they don't have a zip of letters in Scotland? She finally leans toward the lighter and takes a long drag of the cigarette. She calms down and she gazes up at me and smiles. Damn, she's coming on to me, I think. We chat for a bit until she noticed my shot glass is empty and my pint's getting low. She yells over to the barkeep and offers orders refills for both of us. When I reach for my wallet, she pushes my hand away and says, I'll get that, but it'll cost you another one of those funny cigarettes. This time, she asks the bartender for a light and he offers her a stick match, which she pops with her fingernail and lights up. She downs her shot quickly and stares up at me enticingly. I find myself intoxicated by both the alcohol and Rosie. She laughs easily and really loud and has the same sick, cynical sense of humor as me. I'm infatuated. We seem to have a lot in common. After a few more rounds, we become the too loud attraction for the locals who all seem to like Rosie, but nothing but hard stares for me. I ask if she'd like to go out into town and see if we can sign some all Hollows Eve celebration. She declines for what I assume is my Neanderthal-like behavior, behavior from the drinking, so we stay at the Maritime, we get a lot drunker and a lot louder, and we laugh at the locals, all who seem way too serious for my liking. At some bleary hour in the morning, I realize I've missed the last ferry back to Danoon, and I drunkenly ask Rosie, what am I going to do, darling? The next thing I know, she's dragging me out of the Maritime, we're running up the high road, holding hands and laughing. We sneak into the town cemetery where we make love and we sleep soundly on the cool marble grave covers.